Didn't expect to run into you here. Oh, hey, Thumb. What are you doing here? And what are you reading? Are those... Sachin's notes? Yes. I came across his profile while I was organizing some documents and became interested in his research. If it wasn't for that, I never would have agreed to being a commentator. I had a hunch after seeing the fragment of his mind, and sure enough, I came here and found his research. Wait! You've read it already? Are you alright? How do you feel? I think you may have misunderstood something. The reason Sachin chose that architect to inherit his research was that only he could really empathize with both the calamity and the humanity that these notes seek to convey. Only one who resonates with these sentiments would suffer and begin to think of history as bleak, the present as perplexing, and the future as pessimistic. Empathy is a double-edged sword. Clearly, I am not the same sort of person as Sachin was. Empaths have many friends, and their wide social circle comes with certain societal advantages. But this also makes it hard for them to achieve their goals. Why is that? All important things in life involve other people. As such, it's extremely difficult to live a life that causes no harm whatsoever to others. If you really want to achieve your goals, you have to be prepared to make enemies along the way. Not everyone can deal with that reality. And that reality is like the material here. Objective, heavy, negative. But, at the end of the day, for all these experiment results and conclusions, it's just one person's perspective. Sachin's. So, what are your thoughts now that you've read it? As a scholar, Sachin was without a doubt a genius. He laid the blame for the darkness in the world squarely on humanity, experimented extensively with reliable results, and drew logical conclusions. In that sense, one might say his views were correct. So, people are bad? And things can only ever get worse? All of that's true? That is not a question for me to answer. Someone else will arrive shortly. You can ask them instead. All I will say 
is that the world is not built on correctness alone. Sometimes, being correct means nothing at all. Lofty ideals may provide no defense at all against nihilism, but perhaps little decisions can. By their own choice, the idealist seeks to bring happiness to all while denying themselves the same. Thus, they shall never reach even the borders of truth until they wipe away the ignorance that blinds them. I've never been able to agree with certain philosophies. Even Sachin himself struggled to comprehend the notion of sacrificing oneself for the greater good. But sadly, all viewpoints will find their supporters, and the way we see the world largely decides our fates. All right then, I got what I came for. These research materials are yours to look after. I'll be off. Wait, so you came here just to read this stuff? You missed out on a big get-together, you know. A uh, get-together? Ah, yes, that makes sense. This is a good opportunity for that sort of thing. Guess what? Kame treated everyone this time. Then I'm sure he packed up the leftovers for me. See ya. And there he goes. Well, it seems like he really wasn't affected by this research. He said that someone else would answer our questions. Who do you think that'll be? Paimon, you're already here. Nahira! Oh, and that guy. Wait, so you asked him to take part in the championship? <laughs> yes, it was me. Are you surprised? Did you know that there was something wrong with the diadem from the start? And if so, why didn't you switch it out for another one? Because Sachin's research is not mistaken. He spent his entire life researching this topic, and these materials are a result of that. These are the crystallization of his wisdom. Yes, I was worried that the material might cause some disruption, but I didn't want to wipe away all his hard work searching for the truth. So instead, I had Hat Guy here help me keep an eye on things. Seriously? I think you can stop calling me that now. Why? Don't you like it? <sighs> well, anyway, if Sachin's chosen successor hadn't been able to handle his research, or if it had brought pain to more people, he would have intervened at a suitable moment. And after all that, the person Sachin chose turned his nose up at his life's work. Pretty hilarious. I was also hoping that this could be an opportunity for you to learn how to interact with people normally. But it looks like that didn't work out. That wasn't necessary. I'm still paying you back for your help. And the last thing I need is more reasons to be indebted to you. Nahida, what did you mean by Sachin's research is not mistaken? Does that mean that you approve of his research? Hmm, put it this way instead. Truth to me is like a shroom bore. Some people only see the mushroom on the shroom bore's back, and they conclude that the shroom bore is a mushroom. Others see only the shroom bore's body, and they declare that the shroom bore is a boar. Still others look deeper inside, and determine that the shroom bore is meat. These conclusions are all correct in their own way, but none of them objectively describe the shroom bore. Paimon kinda gets it. But also not really. The world is the same way. No one, not even I included, can understand it in its entirety. All of us are somewhere on the path toward truth. Within the confines of our limited knowledge, some may blindly believe in the beauty of this world, and others may focus only on its evils. In truth, the most important thing isn't what state the world is in now, but what people hope it will become. But of course, I don't mean that as a criticism or a call to action. Ultimately, my duty as the God of Wisdom is to guide every form of wisdom to a place where it can find its purpose. 
That was a long speech. So what are you actually going to do with these research materials? Because Kaveh has the successor of this research, does not wish to see these ideas disseminated, I will seal it up. But even though Sachin's research could be considered negative wisdom, it is still a building block of the truth. If someone wishes to follow in his footsteps in the future, I will not stop them. I also look forward to the day that a member of the Vahumana Darshan can not only comprehend his theories, but also find a way out from the despair as well. <laughs> Vahumana doesn't have that kind of talent. Wait, you're not intending to keep me in Vahumana long term, are you? <laughs> I don't remember signing up to become a scholar. Don't you think I'm useful enough to you as a prisoner? Oh boy, here we go again. You think so? Well, to that, I would say that in Sumeru, even prisoners have a right to an education. I hope that your studies in Vahumana will help you deal with your own fate, and learn how best to settle old debts from your past. I will reveal your final thesis myself. I am expecting great things from you, Mr. Hat Guy. <laughs>
is lovely and warm. Things are about to start getting lively again.
Something on your mind again? Where were you while the rest of us were eating together? I don't recall being obligated to report my whereabouts to you. Did you go find another hidey hole to read in? You need to change your ways, you know. You can't survive on books alone. Surviving on meals paid for by you would be harder still. You? <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't take a genius to guess what you've been up to. You were investigating Sachin, weren't you? It was obvious from your notes. However, I don't believe his research alone would have been enough to pique your interest. His way of doing things is disturbing, while you... Well, to be fair, your philosophy disgusts me too, but you and Sachin are nothing alike. I don't imagine your views intersect at all. Egoism and nihilism are not the same thing. My personal interest aside, Sachin's legacy is not entirely meaningless. He conducted experiments on a great scale and left his findings behind. Also, thanks for the compliment, but I'm actually just passing through. I didn't come here for the conversation. Well, not this one at least. What do you mean? What topic of conversation could be more sacred among scholars than the exploration of differing philosophies? Well, based on what I've learned, Sachin and his disturbing way of doing things as you put it, is very likely to have met your father 20 years ago. What did you say? Wait, so... No, surely that doesn't mean... <laughs> so that's why he thought I looked familiar. My father must have gone into the desert due to his influence. I'm afraid so. <sighs> Good thing I shattered that diadem. From now on, nothing like that will ever have to happen again. The boundaries of knowledge are ever-expanding. Someone else will inevitably pick up the same line of research one day, and Vahumana regards it as a reasonable research direction. Oh, not this again. Even if you're right and people are bound to fall into the same intellectual traps, things won't necessarily go the same way again next time. You have to admit that the actions of one individual don't always predict the behavior of the group, and vice versa. Take Sachin, for instance. He's quite an anomaly. And so is the one who stopped him. You. Conflicts of this nature are indeed exceptional, but it will occur again in the future. You said it yourself. The actions of one individual cannot predict the behavior of a whole group. You know that not everyone would have chosen as you did. Uh, even so, I stand by my views. You can forget about trying to convince me. That's fine. We've been arguing over this for years, and I don't hold any hope of you understanding. The issue we're debating has long since moved on from who's right and who's wrong. Thanks for letting me know all this. Uh, what? I said, thanks for letting me know. Hey! Stop acting like you didn't hear me! You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? They say that earnest thanks should be given thrice, so... One more time, please. Yeah. <laughs> 